talk about ISO sensitivity, one of the basics of photography. But first, let's get a little something out of the way. Is it ISO or ISO? Personally, I don't care what you call it, but I know that there will be a discussion about how to pronounce it, so I want to get it out of the way right now. Let's start with the ISO camp. Those that say ISO say that it stands for International Standards Organization. Although it's actually called International Organization for Standardization, which would be IOS. Anyway, the International Organization for Standardization, in case you didn't know, is an international organization that sets standards for things to make it easier for everyone to do business together. They set standards for everything from the number of threads on a screw to quality assurance standards in manufacturing to the sensitivity of a DSLR camera sensor. Anyway, some people say ISO and maintain that it is an acronym. Now, there's another camp, the ISO camp. I happen to be in the ISO camp. According to this camp and the International Organization for Standardization's website, the organization needed to think of something to call themselves since it is called something different in every language around the world. They chose a derivative of the Greek word isos, which means equal, hence ISO. Okay, so let me say again how much I don't care what you call it, but I'm going to call it ISO. I think we all know what I'm talking about. Now for the real story. ISO sensitivity refers to the sensitivity to light of your DSLR's image sensor. You could choose what ISO to use in your DSLR. Depending on your camera, your choices may range from around 100 or 200 and can go all the way up to 3200 and even higher on newer DSLRs. The higher the number, the more sensitive to light you are making the sensor. This means that with a high ISO setting, you can take photos in lower lighting situations without using flash, but still maintaining decent shutter speeds. But there is a trade-off. At higher ISO settings, you will see varying degrees of grain or noise in the photo. This doesn't always mean that you have to use the lowest possible ISO setting in your camera. First of all, with each new DSLR model that comes out, improvements are made in high ISO performance due to advances in hardware and in-camera software. DSLRs are getting more and more crisp at the high, higher ISO settings. But second, sometimes a little noise or even a lot of noise is okay depending on the look that you're going for. When deciding what ISO to use, you have to think about your lighting situation. ISO affects the crispness of the image, but it also affects your aperture and shutter speed. The rule of thumb is, the lower the ISO setting, the crisper your image will be. Many DSLRs have an auto ISO feature as well, where you can set a minimum acceptable shutter speed and the camera will decide which ISO to use. Of course, I suggest simply experimenting with your camera to find out what happens at different ISO settings. Personally, I do not mind some grain in my shots from higher ISOs so that I can focus my mind more on composition and getting the shot. Auto ISO is a lifesaver from, ha from having to think about ISO from shot to shot. And with newer DSLRs, like my D3100 or D300S, when auto ISO selects ISO 1600 or 3200, the shots often look great, so if you have any questions about ISO, please let me know.